build our headquarters in Marseille. And we stayed in Marseille about six months building everything in sight. Because the, the, the Germans had, had really blew it up. And so then uh, they transferred me out to uh, D Company because uh, they were short of people out there. And they built, uh, I had to keep records on what they were doing with the uh, material. And they built a, a stockade to keep the German prisoners. And we had about three or four thousand prisoners. And they built a stockade for them. And all the movies that I've seen, you know, with the, the boots, <laughs> shiny things. Well, yeah, that for the officers. <laughs> I mean, them sad sacks that they had, the regular prisoners, the regular soldiers, they were in bad shape. So they didn't want to escape. No, they didn't want to escape. They were living good. They were eating regular and everything else. They, they didn't want to. Only their problem, they wanted a cigarette so bad all the time, so, you know. But other than that, they'd send them out to work details, and some of them uh, got pretty uh, gay, and, and they didn't want to escape. What they do is go to the, uh, they had the, uh, Houses of prostitution, mm -hmm. and so they escape from their work detail and go over to the houses of prostitution, and they come back to work. <laughs> but they were, you know, put under guard again. We had some mean guys in the army, very mean, hateful people, and German. Soldiers would go out in the morning and they come back. And at the stockade, they had towers, the guys up there with machine guns. And so they had surrounded with barbed wire one, two, three, three rows of barbed wire. And so, as this guy did, he threw a cigarette down in the second. Cigarettes down the second uh, row of barbed wire, mm -hmm. and the rule was if the prisoner got past that second barbed wire, he was in big trouble. So he threw the cigarettes down, and he knew they would do it. Uh, he crawled down there to get the cigarettes, and that's all. They weren't trying to escape or anything, and he opened fire on them. But, uh, you know, they, uh, he said, oh, I thought they were going to escape. But he lied, he lied, he knew. Everybody knew. They transferred him, uh, they couldn't court martial him because he, he followed the rules. There's a lot of mean guys, guys are very mean. One guy had, uh, He had went AWOL and he was in town living for maybe a month. <laughs> he, he just quit the army. <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, they caught him and the lieutenant went to uh, pick him up and they were driving back. And uh, they stopped because he had to relieve himself. And the guy just started walking away. He, and the lieutenant called him, come back, come back. You bet. He pulled out his 45 and shot him. They didn't do nothing to him either. Uh, because the guy didn't come back. But when you shoot somebody, he hadn't, you know, uh, just because he was uh, uh, crazy, he wouldn't shoot and take somebody's life. But uh, they transferred him too. So 
So then the war ended and then the Germany surrendered and we had the big parade in Marseille. All the soldiers were in France were in the parade. And we marched all through the parade. That was General Patton and all those guys were there. And every day was Fini la guerre. That means the war is over. Fini is in, in la guerre's war. So that was, a, that was a happy day. And he probably showed us on the newsreel and all that stuff. So we went back to camp after the parade and they said, oh boy, we get to go home. And sure enough, the next week, they told us pack up, we're moving out. Well, some of those guys fell in love while they were in, in France. And they didn't want to go home. <laughs> so we lost a lot of guys from AWOL. That guy is they were going home and uh, uh, <laughs> stay in France. So we caught the boat and, and we just in a convoy and we headed for home. I thought. And after we left the ocean, I don't know, about like nine days, somebody said, Land! There's land! I said, Oh boy, New York! Let me New York! Oh, hey, yeah. And then the captain of the ship came on the loudspeaker and said, We are now entering the Panama Canal Locks. What is he talking about? I said, locks, locks what? <laughs> well, what had happened, we wasn't going home. We, we went to Central America, where the Panama Canal is. And the canal has three locks in it. In other words, the ship gets in here, and they have to raise the water level to get into the next lock. Raising it to get because the uh, Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean are not the same height. <laughs> so you have to go through these locks to get through it. They have to make the water high enough or low enough for you to go through it. So you just can't take a ship and drive through it. So We, then I knew, I said, well, we don't be going to, New York's too crowded. We're going to we land in Los Angeles somewhere. That wasn't true. We were heading for the Pacific. The war with Japan was still going on. So we lost some guys in Panama, too. They caught one... Uh, a lieutenant, he was a dentist, and he wanted to go home, yeah. <laughs> and they caught him, and they were bringing him back on the ship, put him back on our ship. That guy got off. They were going to make it from, from Panama. I don't know where they thought they were going to go. But they, was, they wanted to go home. We had a lot of guys want to go on. A couple of guys killed themselves. One guy killed himself. The guy, he had his gun, the guy put his hand up there and just tried to stop him from killing himself and shot the whole lot there. Somebody wrote him a letter and told him his wife was uh, running around with another guy and he couldn't take it. He had to kill himself. He did. So we went through the Panama Canal, and the next thing you know, we were in the Pacific Ocean, head folk and all. 
Oh, boy. Well, you told us about... <clears throat> what? You told us about what you did in Japan. Tell us how you got home from Japan. Deku? Tell Trey I... the story about when I... you were trying to come home from Japan. Oh. When I got to come home from Japan? Coming home. So we went in uh, in the Pacific Ocean. We uh, was we was with a group of ships, and we ended up ready to uh, that were getting ready to invade uh, Japan. And we were going to Okinawa. Japan is, I think, about a hundred miles from Okinawa. Anyway. We uh, we were all set, and when we got there, when we uh, landed, they had one of those L LVNs. You know how they you've seen the movies where they had it, it the boat and it, the front lay down and you run out. That's scary. <laughs> you, you can't see. You got to wear trouble and they let it down, but we didn't have any trouble, but the just <laughs> I see too many movies. <laughs> so we went to uh, landed on Okinawa, and then they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, the atomic bomb first, and the guy said, hey, they dropped the atomic bomb. Well, that's when I... I realized I, I didn't do too well in school. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> Atomic bomb. Or, or you, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the topic bomb? I man, it's a big one. I said, yeah, all right. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Uh, see, because I didn't take chemistry in high school. So. Because it is, I didn't have any idea what they were talking about. Everybody knows what a topic bomb is now, but then, that was the first one ever dropped in, in the world. And when they dropped the second one, oh boy. <laughs> then I started trying to get the message. <laughs> So I was in Okinawa for I think about January, about six months, and I got a chance to come home. And so I was uh, uh, coming home for a furlough because. The Red Cross is getting me, sending me home. And so I got on a plane, first airplane ever I ever had. I'd never been on a plane before. And so you get on by rank. So I was sorted, but most of the people on the plane were officers. So I, then I got in, you know, when the plane gets small at the end. Uh, that's where I was. <laughs> and uh, so you've been on a plane before, right? Mm. You never been on a plane? Mm. You never been on a plane? That's what these guys took you on a plane. No, the other two. Hmm? Not him. I was I was pregnant with him. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, what happens on the plane, they have uh, air pockets. And, you know, the plane goes like that. Uh, no big thing, but I didn't know that. <laughs> Nobody ever told me. And so when the plane on the tail end, it gets a little more air pockets than, than the ones there by the wing. By the wing, you don't feel anything. That scared me to death.
Yeah, we, you know, I didn't know. They, they didn't have no jets. They had propellers on them. The airplane. We didn't, they didn't have jets then. Only jets that were ever on an, in the war was from Germany. They had jets, but we didn't have any jets. Where was, who was that man you met in Japan? Huh? Who was the guy you met in Japan? You met a man in Japan where you had to... Oh, well, when I took the plane in Okinawa, I went to uh, uh, Tokyo. And so, you, because you get on by rank, I got bumped in Tokyo, so I had to stay there and wait till another Plane. seat was vacant so I could get on, so I stayed there a couple of days. And a guy, uh, another guy, he got bumped, and he was from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and his father, yeah, it was his father, was Hershey, the one who made Hershey bars, and he was very rich, so he had been to uh, Japan before the war. As a matter of fact, he went to school there, and he he learned how to speak Japanese. It was only about fifty or sixty people in the United States, in the whole country, who wasn't Japanese who could speak Japanese. He wasn't Japanese. He was, a, he was a regular white guy. So he, but his father was rich, and you know, he went to school all over the world. So he learned how to speak Japanese. So he was, they bumped him too. So he and I were there, and he said, let's go over to town. So I went into town with him. And so we went and caught the train, and, uh, you know, he started talking to the people, and, Immediately he drew a